Hi everyone. Today we're going to walk through lessons 73 to 76. So let's get started. This week you're going to need your lessons manual, the student worksheet book, the math card games manual and the game cards, the geometry panels, the geometry reflector, appendix page three, and crayons or colored pencils. The crayons and colored pencils are not included in your Right Start Math supplies. This week, your child is going to learn about tessellating. They will learn more geometry terms and begin the review for the assessment two test that will be taken next week. Go ahead and start by turning to lesson 73. This lesson is going to be focusing on tessellating. You're going to be using your geometry reflector, and that's this, and continue to use the geometry panels. The first paragraph of the warm up section is going to be asking questions that will make your child think a little bit about the difference between centimeters and inches. The second paragraph is going to be asking questions about fractions. Try to have your child answer these questions without the fraction chart first. Let them think a little bit about it before you give them any assistance, any helps. And the last two um, paragraphs of the warm up section is going to be talking about geometry and shapes, things that they've learned in the previous few lessons. You can go back, go back and review those lessons or feel free to use a math dictionary if necessary. Look at the section called geometry panels. You're going to give your child the geometry panels and have them look at each shape and then you're going to ask questions about them. In this section, your child is going to learn that a regular polygon is a shape that has equal sides and equal angles. So for example, let me find the, this here is the tri triangle from your geometry panels. Each side has an equal length. This is the square, and of course, squares have equal sides and also equal angles. Here is the pentagon. Pentagon is a five-sided shape, pent meaning five. So this has five sides, and each of the angles are also equal. The other shape that will be looked at is the hexagon. Hexagon has six sides, and remember, we can remember that by having the number six has an X in it, as well as the hexagon has a has an X in it. And again, six sides, each side equal, and each angle also equal. These questions are also going to ask about the angles. Take a look at the um, explanation section next to this paragraph. It says, remind the child that an angle is the measurement of space between two vertices. So if you have an advanced learner in your home, you may want to go ahead and get your goniometer out. And that is this thing here, measures angles and measure the angle for each shape. So you would slide this on and you would measure this angle for each shape. I'm not doing a very good job holding it like this, but kind of like that. And you can measure these angles with this particular, with the goniometer. Take a look at the section called tessellating with squares. You're going to explain to your child what tessellating is, which is to cover an area without overlapping or leaving gaps. Then you're going, your child is going to use the square shapes and tessellate. The examples are shown at the bottom of the first page of the lesson. Now, when using geometry, geometry panels, there is going to be slight gaps because of these folds. So you're going to see these gaps in the corners. Um, if, you, if that is causing difficulty with your child, you can fold these gaps, these uh, uh, flaps up. And so when your child tessellates, they're going to be more snug next to each other. Now go ahead and take a look at the top of the second page of the lesson under the heading tessellating with triangles. Your child is going to tessellate using these blue triangles from the geometry, geometry panels. Now your child is going to need to alternate the direction of the triangles to tessellate because if they put them next to, next to each other like this, it's not going to tessellate. But if you put them next to each other like this, there is no gap at all. They fit tightly together. You're going to do the same thing with the pentagons and the hexagons. Now notice in your lesson manual, you will see that the pentagons are not going to tessellate. So make sure your child sees those big gaps um, in those pentagons. 
um, samples of the hexagon and the pentagon as shown in the lesson manual. Now take a look at the section called tessellating with hexagon. This is a paragraph that has a fun and interesting uh, tidbit about honeycombs. So um, if your child is interested at all, you can do a little bit more research online and find out, find pictures of honeycombs to show your child. Um, under the section called geometry reflectors, you're going to give um, your geometry reflector to your child and let them explore the line of symmetry for each of the geometry panels. Now, the interesting thing about the reflector is it allows you to um, see the opposite side and it reflects back the, the side that you're on. So you can see through it as well as reflection of it. So you can find the exact line of symmetry. Now you might want to practice using, these ge the, using the geometry reflector on printed shapes as well, in, in addition to the geometry panels. Now finding the line of symmetry is the absolute center line of a shape where it is exactly the same size on each side of the shape without any overlap or gap. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have a square. Now a square, square's line of symmetry is right in the middle so that this side looks exactly like this side in size and shape. There is no overlap. Now the square has three different lines of symmetry. The, this one, the vertical line, the horizontal line, and the diagonal line. And no matter which line you use, there is no gap and no overlap for the opposite side. Then you're going to give your child worksheet 42. Have them read through those instructions and complete the worksheet independently as possible. Now, here is a picture of what the, geom the worksheet looks like. As you can see, there's a tessellation of the star that's inserted inside a um, hexagon. Now, give your child time to find the shapes that it's requesting for them to find um, on the worksheet on their own before you start giving them any help. Now, if you find that they are struggling in finding some of those shapes, then show maybe a shape of it on the boards so that they know what it looks like. So if they're not quite sure what the rhombus looks like, draw a picture of a rhombus on the whiteboard. You may even want to give the exact angle or side of the shape as it appears in the worksheet. Now you have the answer solution obviously in your lesson manual so you can see what each shape looks like and where they can be found on the worksheet. Um, if your child find, struggles in finding one of the shapes, then maybe show them that shape on a different portion of the worksheet and then have them find the shape in another portion of the worksheet. Um, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so you're going to want to pick a game that will keep up your child's math facts. All right, let's go ahead and turn to lesson 74. This lesson is going to help your child organize the shapes that they have learned so far. Now, the first paragraph of the warm up is the same exact paragraph as in the less, less, last lesson. So, if your child still does not know the difference between inches and centimeters, you're going to want to spend some time reviewing that concept by going back over those lessons. Now, in the second paragraph, um, the child is going to review the different shapes that they've learned so far. Look at the section called geometry terms. For this section, your child is going to need the triangles from appendix three. Now the appendix pages are found in the back of the lessons manual. So here's the lessons manual. And in the very back, you're going to find the appendix pages. And this is what the page appendix three looks like. Now, if at all possible, I highly recommend that you copy this page, especially if you have other children who will be coming up into level C later on, because you're going to need that page for your, the, your younger children as well. Now, you can either cut out these triangles in advance, this is the triangles cut out, or if your child enjoys um, cutting things out, you can have your child cut them out as well. Now, under the second paragraph, under the section geometry terms, you're going to use the 3060 triangle to show the 90 degree angle. Remind your child what the 90 degree angle is. And let them know that this angle here, the 90 degree angle, is called also called a right 
angle. And then you're going to spend a few minutes finding other 90 degree angles in your room. Samples would be like what's a, a piece of paper has an angle, a 90 degree angle, maybe the corner in the room or a book or whatever. Just help, help your child find 90 degree angles in your room. Now the third paragraph under this section is having your child put these two um, 30, 60 triangles together to build an equilateral triangle. So they're going to be doing something like this. Now, before you do that, make sure your child remembers what an equilateral triangle is by asking them, do you remember what an equilateral triangle is? And just so you remember, an equilateral triangle has equal sides and equal angles. Once your child has put together those tri triangles, then ask what each of the angles are. Now, two of the 60 degree angles are already built into the triangle, right? So here's our 30, 60, or our larger equilateral triangle. We know that this angle is 60, and we also know this angle is 60. Now, the top angle has a combination of two, right? Now, this one is 30, this one is 30. Put together, that forms a 60 degree angle. Then your child is going to use these triangles to make a rectangle. And you're going to ask them about the parallel lines. So when they make the rectangle, it's going to look like this. And you're going to ask how many parallel lines this shape has. And it has the top and the bottom, and then the side and side. And it's also going to ask the degrees for this particular shape. And we do know that this is a 90 degree angle we also know this is a 90 degree angle. We also know that this is 30 and this is 60. So 30 plus 60 is also 90. So they can calculate out these other angles and find out that they are 90 degree angles or right angles by adding those degrees together. Then you're gonna have your child build the parallelogram. Now this one might be a little difficult for your child to know what it is. If so, draw a sample of a parallelogram on the whiteboard. And then once your child builds it, ask them how many, so here's the parallelogram, looks like this. Ask your child how many parallel lines there are. Well, this line and this line is a par are parallel lines and the top and the bottom are also parallel lines. Now, the lesson manual does not have your child calculate the angles, but um, you may want to ask your advanced student um, if you have an advanced student in your home, what the angles are for this shape. On the top of the second page of the lesson, your child is going to build a quadrilateral. Now, a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. So if you break down that word, quad means four, um, lateral means side, so four sides. Now, samples of what a quadrilateral is, is shown in the lesson manual, but also beware that a rectangle and the parallelogram are also quadrilaterals. You're going to want to have your child build a different one, like one of the two that's listed on the top of the second page of the lesson. Now, again, your advanced student can go ahead and calculate the angles of this quadrilateral. Then you're going to have your child draw on the whiteboard a couple of trapezoids. Now explain that a trapezoid has only one set of parallel, line, parallel lines. Now take a look at the section called Venn Diagram. Now we used Venn Diagrams in lessons seven and eight of level C. So if you would like to review the Venn Diagram, you can go back to those lessons. In this particular Venn diagram, your child is going to sort through and organize different polygons that they are familiar with at this point. Now, you're going to want to review with your child, if needed, what each of the headings mean, because we have the headings of polygon, regular and non-regular polygons, quadrilaterals. Um, so making sure your child understands what each of those terms mean before we start um, categorizing all of these polygons. Now remember, for your sake, a polygon, a regular polygon, is a shape that has equal sides. That means a not regular polygon does not have all their sides equal with one another. Also, a quadrilateral is a shape with four sides. Now what you're going to do is say a shape name and then let your child put that shape name in the correct spot on the diagram. Let your child do this on their own without any help from you. Then any errors they make, start asking them questions like, 
why did you put that shape in this section? Let them explain it to you. By doing that, you will see if the child understands what the shape is and where it should go. Pull that information from your child so they can see their own error. For example, if they put a rectangle in the regular polygon section, ask, why did you put a rectangle in the regular polygon section? What is a regular polygon? Well, a regular polygon has equal sides. Then ask, does a rectangle have equal sides? Many times just asking these type of questions will let your child discover their error on their own without you saying anything else. Then you're going to give your child, child worksheet 43 with the geometry reflector. Let them complete the worksheet on their own if possible. Now take a look at the explanation sections next to um, the, the worksheet. Page. It says, some children might benefit by placing a plain sheet of paper below the row they are working on. So this is the worksheet. As you can see, these are really tight lines and some kids struggle with that. So if you put a piece of paper on, on the, under the line that they're working on, it kind of helps keep their mind um, focused or their eyes focused on what they are working on at that moment. So they don't write the answer in the wrong line. Now, if you have a struggling learner, then you might want to read through the chart as they're working. So when working on the rectangle line, you can ask them which one of these shapes is the rectangle and then have them write their answer. And then ask, do they have parallel sides and write their answer? And then ask, um, do they have equal angles and write their answer, and so, et cetera. So you're guiding your child reading through that chart with them. This is going to help the struggling learner stay focused on the task. Because there are so many different questions and shapes, this chart can get a little confusing and overwhelming for that struggling learner. Now, there is not a math card game listed for this lesson, so you're going to want to pick a game and keep up those child, your child's math facts. Let's go ahead and turn to lesson 75. 75 is a review for the upcoming assessment test next week. As I have in the past, I'm going to give you the lesson numbers to review the problems your child might have struggled with. If your child struggled with problem one, which was 45 or 47 plus 15, review lessons 20 and 21. For problem two, which is 110 minus 22, review lessons 44, 54, 56, and 58. For problem three, 61 plus 39, review lessons 20 and 21. For problem four, four and a half plus two and a half, review lesson 68. For problem five, which is five times four, look at lessons 33, 34, 35, and 36. For problem six, one minus one half, take a look at lessons 66 and 69. Problem seven, which is the rhombus, look at lesson 72. For problem eight, which is the hexagon, take a look at lesson 63. For problem nine, which is the equilateral triangle, review lesson 64. For problem 10, working with the tr right triangle, take a look at lesson 74. Problem 11, which is the centimeter, you can review lesson 68. For problem 12, the pentagon, review lesson 60. For problem 13, the inch, look at lesson 72. For problem 14, the trapezoid, you can review lesson 74. Problem 15, which is the word problem, take a look at, the, at lessons 28 and 29. And the last problem, problem 16, dividing the rectangle, you can review lesson 69. Now that last problem on the worksheet will have your child creatively split up the rectangle into force. There are many ways to solve this problem. Just one possible solution is listed in the manual. Be sure you review any lessons necessary that your child struggled with so your child is prepared for the assessment next week. There is also not a math card game listed for this lesson, so make sure you pick a game that will keep up your child's math facts. Let's go ahead and turn to lesson 76. Now this is a fun lesson with art and math card games. Worksheet 45 will provide the same tessellation sheet that was provided on worksheet 42. Your child can create their own design on that tessellation sheet and color it to make it a work of art. 
On the second page of the lesson, there are three math card games listed to play. The first one is subtraction memory game, which you played in lessons 43 and 48. Uh, the zero corners game, which you played in lesson 52. And we do have a blog for that one. So if you can't remember how to play that, you can look that one up on our, our website. And the third game uh, that you're going to play for this lesson is subtracting from the 100 game, which you played in lesson 56. Also, don't forget to continue reviewing for the assessment next week. Well, that's it for the week. If you have any questions or concerns about a lesson, or if your child is struggling with something, give us a call or email us. We're here to help. I look forward to seeing you next week as we cover lessons 77 to lesson, to lesson 80. Have a great week, everybody.